Hello, Rock on Beer viewers. Welcome to a new segment I'm starting for the channel called Weird Weekend Review. Uh, if you are new to the channel or, well, if you've been around, well, I'll just explain it. I, when I do beer reviews, I like to review weird beers, beers that catch my eye, beers that are kind of out of the ordinary um, because I'm a home brewer and uh, those kind of beers are kind of things that excite me and give me ideas for, oh, I could use that in my brewing, I could do this, that, the other thing, will this work, won't it work? So yeah, that's what I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start every weekend. I'm going to release a review of a beer that has caught my attention for being kind of weird or wacky. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it works. So beer one, I picked a, a doozy for episode one. This is Too Evil Geyser Goze. So this is a collaboration beer between uh, Two Roads Brewing and Evil Twin Brewing. Um, if you don't know who Evil Twin is, they are, uh, he is the twin, he is Yeppe, who is Evil Twin, who is the twin brother of Mikkel from Mikkeller, both Danish brewers. Uh, Two Roads, I believe they're a brewery in Connecticut. Uh, I know they're not an Icelandic brewery, but I, I don't know a lot about them. So this is their collaboration. It's a really cool can art. Um, I'll just, yeah, before I even talk about the beer, we'll talk that it's cool can art. So let's get to the weird part. This is brewed with Icelandic moss, herbs, kelp, and sea salt. So I looked a little bit more into it on the interwebs, and this is brewed with, yeah, ingredients that come from Iceland. So there's the moss, herbs, and kelp, which, yeah, those are weird but self-explanatory. The sea salt is actually birch-smoked sea salt from Iceland, as far as I know. And uh, the souring agent that they use to sour this beer with is a type of yogurt that um, originated, I guess, on Iceland, and it's called... I'll pronounce it in Danish because that's the only time I've ever heard it said out loud. So skyra is what it's called. That's S-K-Y-R. I hope I'll be able to put in letters there. But uh, skyra, it's a yeah, it's a yogurt. So this is with, made with a yogurt culture, I guess, to to sour it because goza is a sour, salted style beer. I am just gonna. It is, comes in this uh, comes in this big uh, 500 milliliter can. I'm gonna save a little bit to drink out of the can later. Well, that is very clear, very nice. Look at that! Wow. Uh, this was brewed. Where was this brewed? It looks like an American can, so I'm guessing it was brewed in in America. Brewed by Evil Twin Brewing, Stratford, Connecticut. So it was brewed in Connecticut which you can tell that this was brewed at like a pretty big brewery. How clear that is. It's crazy. Let's smell it. Whoa. That's not how I expected it to smell. Ooh. Uh, it has a very, um, hmm. How to put this uh, delicately. It has a very Pilsner-esque, like Pilsner malt type smell. Um, that um, the kind of smell that you get from a from a Pilsner, from a uh, perhaps one that also comes in a can. But uh, there's a bit of spiciness behind it. I can definitely I get kind of a saline type smell, so a little bit of saltiness. I thought I thought I'd get a little smoke, but not not really. Not really. Oh, there's a there when I when I give it a little swirl, there's a um there I get some of that goza type smell that um kind of um just a little hit of sourness, a little bit of acid, and some kind of herby type smells. Whoa. Whoa. I apologize for for sounding 
skeptical on the smell. There is a lot going on in the taste. It's a lot more sour than I than I was prepared for. Um, I love my gozes and Berliner Weisses really sour. So um, once my mouth acclimates a little bit, but it is definitely very sour. Um, probably more sour than you're used to with this kind of style. It's just really mouth puckering, that like sucking on a lemon sourness. The salt component is also really, um, really prevalent. It's very, um, very, uh, yeah, salty. It's, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Hearty? No, that's not hearty. Uh, savory. That's it. Savory. Hearty. Not even close. It gives it that, it gives the beer that kind of savory, um, and there's a little bit of, um, kind of herbaceousness in there as well. Doesn't specify what kind of herbs, but I'm guessing just wild herbs. Yeah. Not picking up any smoke. I don't know. It says smoked sea salt on the on the um, rate beer page, but just, this just says sea salt. So who knows? Maybe that's, uh, maybe somebody didn't type that in properly. So I don't get any smoke. There's a good sour on it. It's not um it's not yogurty or um it doesn't have any off flavors to the sour. I would I would assume this is kettle soured with uh, with yogurt. It's a very nice goza. Um I really I'm a big fan of the style. I was wondering if for instance, I mean Moss and kelp, I don't know really what those are going to give. I guess the kelp will have some residual um, saltiness. This does have a lot of saltiness and a lot of sourness, so I'm guessing that they... It's a very aggressive taste, and if there was anything left over, um, the herbs don't really come through that much either. There's a little bit of aftertaste of some kind of like herbaceousness, but... Um, the the sourness, the sharp sourness, and this high salt content kind of overpower any kind of, I don't know, um, yeah, any kind of subtle notes that maybe any anything else might have given it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going into this, I was, I was a little skeptical of the beer because it sounded like uh, a lot to put into a beer that, and a lot of stuff that could go wrong, but... It's just a straight, straightforward, really nice goza. Um, it's not far off from kind of my baseline for this style. I don't really, um, yeah, I don't really know what the kelp and the moss did did for it, but uh, I haven't really eaten a lot of moss, so maybe it maybe it did add something. Uh, I was most interested in the yogurt uh, being used as a souring agent. That is a very cool thing, if it's true. Also, got that off the rate beer, so there's nothing about that on the can. So, I don't know. But yeah, uh, it's a very straightforward... Uh, I can I can recommend drinking it. It's, uh, it's very nice. It's intensely sour, intensely salty. So, if that's your idea of a good goza, then there you go. Uh, on a weirdness scale, though, I was looking. I was looking for maybe something like, "Wow, something." This does not. This doesn't bring anything that I haven't tasted in other gozes. So, on a weirdness scale, I'm going to give it not very weird. It's it's not really weird at all. It's just a, a very nice um, drinkable goza. I'm going to drink some out of the can just to be cool. better from the glass. It tastes, um, is, there's a lot more salt in the, in the flavor there instead of gulping it out of the can, but it's very refreshing, very nice little goza. I'm guessing you're going to be able to find this in the U.S. too. Um, check it out if you're in Europe. I've seen this around. If you're in the U.S., I'm guessing since it was brewed in Connecticut, you might be able to get it. So yeah, check it out, and uh, I'll be back. I do 
mostly weird beer reviews. I'll link some of them. I'll scoot over here and I'll link maybe one over here. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more weird beer reviews because that's what I'm going to be doing mostly uh, in the future. Along with, I do home brewing and um, general goofiness uh, that revolves around beer. So, uh, yeah. Cheers.